Arriving in Aram, Jacob met Lovan's daughter Rachel, shepherding her father's flocks at the well outside the city. Rachel introduced him to his uncle, her father Lovan, who put him in charge of his flocks. Jacob asks his uncle Lovan to marry Rachel in return for working for Lovan for seven years. Lovan agreed, but at the last minute switches Rachel for her older sister Leah. Lovan then allowed Jacob to marry Rachel as well, on condition that he work for another seven years afterward. Over the course of the next few years, Leah gives birth to four sons in succession, while Rachel remained childless. Vateder Rachel kiyodo liyakev, vatekani Rachel baachoisa, vatoymer liyakev havali bonim vim ayin mesa anoichi. Genesis chapter 30 verse 1. Rachel saw that she had not borne Jacob any children. Rachel was jealous of her sister, and she said to Jacob, Find me children, and if not, I am like dead. Now we know that from a Jewish perspective, jealousy is a big no-no. It's the Tenth Commandment. Envy drives to self-sabotage. Envy causes wars. It's toxic for relationships and can lead a person to severe depression or anxiety. History has proven that jealousy can lead a person to misbehave in the most egregious ways. It's obvious to all why God would steer us clear. Yet, this verse seems to outright suggest that Rachel transgresses and was jealous of her sister. How can this be? To fully appreciate this, we must first understand that jealousy in and of itself may not be so bad. It's when, why, and what that make that determination. As a matter of fact, jealousy is a raw, powerful emotion and can and should be channeled for the good. In the Ayom Yom for the 24th of Cheshman, the Rebbe quotes the following. In material matters, one should always look at he whose situation is lower than one's own and thank the good God for his kindness to him. In spiritual matters, one should always look at he who is higher than oneself and plead with God to grant him the intelligence to learn from the other and the ability and strength to rise higher. In other words, the Rebbe is saying that material jealousy is forbidden and destructive. The best practice to steer clear is by contrasting your wealth and possessions with someone who has less than you. However, there is another side to life, and that's the spiritual side. And if one follows the same exercise for spiritual matters, not only will it not be to your benefit, it will certainly be harmful. Concerning spiritual matters, one must look at someone who has more than he or she and desire what they have. That drive to advance further is healthy jealousy. When directed properly, it's what propels me to greater spiritual heights. Destructive, petty jealousy is born of the fear that the other person's success will lessen our own self-worth. Healthy, productive jealousy is born out of a confidence that I have been gifted so much. Someone else's success is a step closer to advancing in my own productivity. I have a lot more to grow and to share. Rachel attributed Leah's fertility to her righteousness and was therefore jealous of her sister's good deeds. This sort of jealousy is constructive since it spurs us to improve ourselves. Our sages similarly state that jealousy among Torah scholars increases wisdom. Baba Basra, page 22a, Kina Soifrim Tar Bechachma. Jealousy can be a positive force in our lives when we learn to apply it correctly. I wish you a good Shabbos.